All right, hey guys, this is uh, River Sean over at the Centered Path, and um, we're doing an entire series on, right now we're in the middle of the Eightfold Path, but we're doing an entire series on the basics of Buddhism. And I have completed this, uh, or made for you, this kind of a cheat sheet, or like a, an idea sheet. And there's two pages of it, actually. There's about 27 objects on there, and we're going to split it up into about 40 different pieces because each one deserves a few minutes of explanation. And each one of these we go over, uh, I've been going over once a week in my class, which I have on Sunday mornings for meditation and mindfulness, and contemplation, and all that kind of stuff, and some Buddhist practice. And we're trying to apply the Buddhist, um, what's it called? The, we're trying to apply Buddhist uh, philosophy, spirituality, and religious concepts to make our lives in this modern day Better. So stick with me, and uh, we're going to go into the last sections of uh, the Eightfold Path. Okay, guys, so we've gone over the Eightfold Path so far, and we've done uh, the first section, which is the development of prajna, or wisdom, which is the right view, belief, and understanding or the right intention and thought and then we did the second part which is sila or morality and virtue which is uh, right speech right action and right livelihood and we've already gone over one of the samadhi or concentration uh, parts which is right effort and how we're going to be able to do this kind of thing now today we get into some deeper meat of it and we're going to go into right mindfulness or meditation so right mindfulness is kind of one of the ones that the mindfulness uh, community is really focused on and they let go of all the other parts which is kind of a shame because you're missing out on the rest of the eightfold path so it's kind of like remember we're seeing it as a as a wheel with eight spokes and if you take out two or three of the wheels that wheel can shatter okay or it won't it won't travel as well so we have all these eight spokes meet at the hub that's what all of these are supposed to do as the eightfold path and so unless you're adding in to your meditation and, and mindfulness practice, things like right, the views that you have, the beliefs you have, the understanding, you're developing wisdom, you're developing compassion, you're, you're, you're looking at your intention and your intent and thoughts about things, the speech, how you're speaking, and how you speak not only to others, but how you speak to yourself. Are they, are they skillful? Are they helping? Are they, are they improving things? Uh, the next thing is, too, are what are your actions? Are your actions uh, beneficial? Are they skillful? Or are they unskillful? Skillful actions are going to promote your happiness and, and stability in life, and unskillful ones are going to deplete that. That makes a lot of sense, hopefully. But today we're going to go over mindfulness and meditation. So in meditation, it has to be right meditation. So I know you've got to be in a kind of a charged word saying right meditation. Remember the Buddha when he taught for over 45 years all through India. He would have to explain things over and over and over again to different people. And he would not explain it exactly the same to all the people. Some people just didn't get the, the ideas that he had if they were poorly educated. Or maybe they, they would, some people of course, very adept and very clever and very intelligent. But there were some people who aren't. There's some people who needed different kinds of examples. Some people needed no examples. Some people needed a lot of examples. And he, he explains this a lot as you start reading through the, the volumes and volumes of teachings of the Buddha. Okay? And now we see, like here, we even have people who do different kinds of meditations. There are people who do Kundalini meditation and Zazen. And they do um, the Samatha and, and Vipassana. And they do all these kinds. Of, they get stuck in one. And they're not willing to look through those. The, the Kasinas, for example. Um, which is part of the, the Satipatthana group, which is a bunch of meditations that were developed for people based on their conditions at the time, their understanding at the time, and their, their psychology. You, know, you can think of the Buddha as actually a psychologist, if you will. He was a very brilliant understander of the mind and started the entire process of people looking at the mind. And that's what we want you to do is look at your mind, or I look at my mind, and see how I react, and is my effort and actions all that stuff good. So, uh, going on to this, uh, when you're in meditation, or when you're thinking about being mindful, am I fully aware of this moment? Am I paying attention to what I'm doing at the time? Or am I thinking about the 32 things I should have done earlier, and the 44 things I have to do later, and my brain is on high alert, which it often is. Remember, this is a stress reduction kind of thing. Or am I concentrating? Am I fully aware of what's going on right now? If I'm eating, 
am I fully involved in eating? If I'm drinking tea, am I fully involved in drinking tea? Am I involved in the sight, the smell, the feeling, the taste, the sound of the water dripping, the sound of me moving, the outside sounds? Am I fully aware of that? Then I can focus myself on one point. And you become much more... Um, you know, as focused as an individual and you become happier because there's less stuff hassling you because you've let go of all of those things you realize how less important those really are um, we have to be rather diligently we have to be diligent about our awareness of our minds we have to be in our bodies which is called kaya and sensations vidana okay and the thoughts of chitta so these three things that we have to, we're really working on our mind. And you'll hear this many times uh, with some, some Buddhists, they'll do their prostrations or their bows, they'll hold the hands above the head and towards the face and towards the body. So this is the, the mind, the speech, and the body. Those are the things we're trying to protect. Those are the things we're trying to develop so that we can reduce our suffering and reduce the suffering as, of others and misunderstandings. And we're going to do that with compassion and, and, and wisdom as well. Um, uh, things that we're trying to, to understand too, the dharma, the truth, the things, the, remember we have all that stuff. Being aware of one's own mind is the key. So watch your mind. This is the whole process of sitting down and doing some of the mindful meditations, the mindfulness meditations, or sit down and watch your mind. Okay, some people say, oh, I can't do it. My mind does too many things. But that's also the process. You have to see how many things it's doing. So when you sit and, and observe your mind like a scientist or an artist, for example, when you sit and watch something, you start to understand how it reacts. Okay, this is observation is the first part of science. It is many things we have to see it occur. Um, you can really start to get better control and understanding of things if you start to just stop and watch. It's the same thing with our minds. Some people think they can't because their minds won't stop. Well, we don't want it to stop, but we want to see what it's doing. It's kind of like when you bring a car to a mechanic he doesn't say no problem. He says, well, let's diagnose it. Or even a doctor, you know, come in and you tell them, I messed up, fix me. Well, they're going to have to do some observation for us and find out, well, what's going on here? You know, the car has to be started. You listen to it. They're going to feel it. They're going to check the gauges. They're going to check the fluids, these kind of things. That's what we want to do with our own minds. And that's what the process of meditation and mindfulness. In meditation, it's not just to become still, but it's also to develop wisdom and compassion. Okay, and also to start to learn some concepts in Buddhism, which are uh, inevitability of change, and that everything is changing, and that everything is impermanent. So these are very important concepts, and if we start to develop those, we start to see and appreciate what we have for what we have. And we start to appreciate um, uh, things that are, that, are, we, that are not going well with us, we know that they're going to end. So we can have some consolation in that, and we can also start looking for ways to end it quicker, perhaps, you know, so wisely. And then we can also see that if something is really good, we know that that also might end, so we should really spend our time to appreciate it and really just soak ourselves in it right now. Okay, it's just like drinking tea or eating a food or making love, any of those kind of things. We want to really get into them as we are at the moment. Because imagine if you're thinking about other things uh, when you're trying to play with your kids, you know, have fun with your kids, you miss out on all that. You weren't really there. So to be really there is important. It's hard to do. It's not easy. Trust me, I try all the time. I mean, it's, it's, it's very, very difficult. It's definitely a practice. All of this Buddhist stuff is a practice, and the more you practice, the better you get. And of course, when you go to sleep, you start practicing thinking too much and worrying all the time. You're going to get good at it, so you need to offset that with another practice. Okay, so this is Reverend Sean over the, the Centered Path. Uh, go to thecenteredpath.org, download the sheets uh, for this section. This was mindfulness and meditation. Hopefully we got some good insight for you. Ha, get it. Uh, and hopefully you can develop this and use this with your own practices. And, uh, you know, have a better life, right? Take care.